How do some people manage to stay in control and outsmart their rivals? Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power can be broadly classed into five parts based on theme. Part 1. Adopt a Power Mindset Part 2. Communicate Powerfully Part 3. Adopt Behaviors that Enhance Your Power Part 4. Take Decisive Action Part 5. Avoid These Potential Pitfalls We've already covered Part 1 and 2. Check out the videos if you haven't already done so. This video explores all the laws in Part 4. Take Decisive Action You'll learn how to harness the power of decisive action to outmaneuver your opponents, make yourself indispensable, and stay in control. I want to mention 66% of those who watch our videos don't subscribe to our channel. Our goal is 50%. So, if you ever liked any video we posted, or if you like this channel, kindly do us a favor and click the subscribe button. It helps this channel more than you know, and the bigger the channel gets, the more videos we'll be able to post consistently. Thank you, and enjoy this video. Law 8. Bait Your Enemy Make your opponent come to you. When you force others to act, you're in control. Bait them, then attack. Many gain power through aggression, but this has a downside. Constantly attacking tires you out and makes you reactive, not strategic. True power comes from acting effectively, not just aggressively. Instead of constantly attacking, set traps and wait. This way, you win the long-term war, not just short-term battles. By making opponents react to you, you stay in control. Control your emotions and use others' emotional reactions to your advantage. For instance, Talleyrand baited Napoleon with the chance to escape exile and return to power, ultimately leading to Napoleon's downfall. Similarly, Japan lured the Russian navy into a long, exhausting journey before crushing them. Making your enemy come to you keeps them defensive and tired, often making them feel they're in control when they're not. Sometimes, sudden aggression works better, especially if your opponent is weak or caught off guard. Use surprise to force them to react quickly and make mistakes. The tactic depends on the situation. Either deplete a strong enemy's strength by luring them or quickly overpower a weak one. Law 11. Be needed. The more your boss needs you, the more freedom you have to achieve your goals. Make yourself essential so they can't function without you. This gives you power and security. To be powerful, make others depend on you. This is especially true with your superiors. Be so important that they can't get along without you. Power comes from relationships, not independence. When others need you, you gain the freedom to pursue your own goals. For example, Otto von Bismarck served two weak Prussian kings who needed him desperately, giving him significant power and control. Make yourself irreplaceable by having a unique skill. Michelangelo's talent was so exceptional that despite disagreements, the Pope never fired him. Position yourself in a way that, if you leave, your superior can't easily replace you. Genuine talent is best, but you can also fake it if needed. John Howard Lawson was crucial to Humphrey Bogart, making him untouchable by Columbia Pictures. Stay essential and alert. Bismarck secured his position by aligning with a weak king, gaining promotions, and building mutual dependence. Total independence can lead to isolation. Creating mutual dependence with your superior is less stressful and ensures they rely on you entirely. Law 15. Annihilate your enemy. To ensure your safety, you must completely destroy your enemy. If you leave even a tiny part of them intact, they will eventually come back to harm you. Being lenient is risky. History shows that leaders who spare their defeated enemies often face revenge later. Defeated enemies usually hold grudges and seek revenge. To secure your position, you must neutralize them entirely so they can't retaliate. This doesn't always mean killing them. Banishment or complete disempowerment can work too. For example, Chiang Kai-shek nearly defeated Mao Zedong's communists but shifted focus to Japan. The communists regrouped over a decade and eventually forced Chiang to flee. To handle enemies. 1. Don't be half-hearted. 2. Avoid negotiations as they can undermine your victory. 3. Defeat your enemies fully. 
Empress Wu of China ruled for 40 years by ruthlessly eliminating all rivals. She framed and executed a concubine, poisoned family members, and controlled her youngest son to become emperor. She executed those who plotted against her and declared herself a divine ruler. Her ruthless actions left no challengers and secured her long reign. Sometimes, letting opponents self-destruct works, but leniency often emboldens enemies. Crushing them thoroughly is usually the best approach. Law 22. Surrender to win. Surrendering can be a smart move. When you're weaker, it's better to surrender than to fight and risk defeat. By surrendering, you gain time to grow stronger and wait for your opponent's power to weaken. You'll have a better chance to win later. Though it seems odd, surrender can give you control. Fighting back aggressively often makes things worse, leading to total defeat. Instead, surrender to stop the conflict and confuse your opponent. Stay close and ready to act when the time is right. For example, King Gojian of ancient China lost a battle to the ruler of Wu. He didn't run away but worked in Wu's stables, learning his enemy's weaknesses. When Wu was weakened by drought and internal conflict, Gu Jian returned, attacked, and won. Power shifts over time. Surrendering lets you prepare for when your opponent's power declines. German writer Bertolt Brecht fled to the U.S. during Hitler's rise and wrote against capitalism. While other writers were confrontational during the Hollywood witch hunts, Brecht was polite and vague, using an interpreter to confuse the committee. They dismissed him, allowing him to continue his work. Sometimes, being a martyr might be necessary, but waiting for the right moment to act is usually wiser. Law 28. Act boldly. When you hesitate, doubts can ruin your efforts. To be successful, you must act with confidence. If you make mistakes, fix them boldly. People admire those who are bold. Here's why boldness works. Lie boldly. Big, confident lies can be more convincing. Bold actions can cover up flaws. Hesitate and lose. Others will sense your hesitation and take advantage. Being unsure makes you weak. Bold moves intimidate. Acting boldly makes you look powerful and can make others back off. Hesitation creates obstacles. You'll make mistakes and fail if you chase goals half-heartedly. Boldness erases doubt. Bold actions lead others to follow you without question. Boldness makes you stand out. Bold people attract attention and power. Many avoid boldness to stay liked and avoid conflict, which makes them appear weak. Boldness, like Napoleon's, needs practice. He learned to be bold and achieved great success despite being small. Practice being bold in situations like negotiations. Don't settle for less. Ask for what you want. For example, Columbus asked for a title while seeking funding and gaining respect and resources. Pietro Aretino became famous by boldly mocking the Pope in a pamphlet, which led to a job offer. Use boldness wisely to reach goals, but don't overdo it, as it can lead to problems. Law 31. Set up phony choices. To deceive people, give them the illusion of choice while limiting their options to those that benefit you. This makes them feel in control, but you pull the strings. Follow these principles keenly to succeed. 1. Spin the choices. Offer several options, but make one appear the best. For example, Henry Kissinger gave President Nixon multiple choices, but framed his preferred one as the most rational and beneficial. 2. Advocate the opposite. Suggest an option you don't want as the best choice. People who oppose you will then pick what you want. This works with children and others who naturally go against suggestions. 3. Change the playing field. When people resist, force their hand. John D. Rockefeller did this by controlling oil shipping and making oil companies choose between selling to him or facing ruin. 4. Shrink the options. If someone hesitates, offer worse choices over time. This makes current options seem better, pushing them to decide quickly. 5. Emphasize the risks. Highlight the risks of other options to guide fearful individuals toward your preferred choice. 6. Two bad alternatives. 
force opponents to choose between two bad options that benefit you. General William Sherman used this tactic by dividing his army and confusing the Confederates. Ivan the Terrible used this strategy by creating chaos and then offering the Russian people a choice. Grant him absolute power or face instability. They chose him, avoiding civil war and accepting his dictatorial control. In business, allowing competitors to operate freely can reveal their weaknesses, which you can exploit later. Law 33. Use others' weaknesses. Everyone has a weakness, an insecurity, emotional need, or hidden pleasure. Find and use these weaknesses to your advantage. Here's how to do it. 1. Identify weaknesses. People either show their weaknesses openly or hide them. It's easier to exploit those who conceal their shortcomings. Look for signs in their behavior or body language. 2. Listen and seem interested. People often reveal their weaknesses in conversation. Act like you're genuinely interested or share confidence to encourage them to share their own. 3. Pay attention to details. Notice how people react to different situations, including their likes and dislikes. Details often reveal hidden weaknesses. 4. Indulge their desires. Find out what they crave and use this knowledge to influence them. 5. Explore childhood issues. Weaknesses often stem from childhood. If someone reacts strongly, it might be tied to unmet childhood needs. 6. Look for contradictions. People often hide one trait behind another. For example, a loud person might be secretly timid. 7. Find the linchpin. In groups, identify the key person who has influence but is vulnerable. Manipulating this person can help you control the group. 8. Address emotional voids. People with insecurities or discontent can be controlled by addressing these unmet needs. Art dealer, Joseph Duvain, exploited Arabella Huntington's insecurity about her humble origins by flattering her and selling her an expensive painting. Similarly, con artist Victor Lustig exploited a businessman's need for social validation to swindle him. Be cautious when using others' weaknesses, as pushing too far can backfire. Always plan ahead and be ready for any unexpected reactions. Law 39. Rattle your opponents. Always stay calm and in control. Losing your temper means losing control. Instead, try to anger your opponents to throw them off balance and gain an advantage. When someone gets irrationally angry at you, remember two things. They look foolish. Their anger makes them seem weak and loses them respect. It's not personal. Their anger usually comes from their own issues, not from anything you've done. Instead of reacting emotionally, use their anger to your benefit. You might want to provoke them to show their instability or make them act foolishly. You can do this by mocking them or attacking their pride. When they react, you can more easily win. For example, Napoleon's downfall started when he lost his temper during a meeting over Talleyrand's actions. Napoleon's uncontrolled anger made him look weak and unsteady, leading others to doubt him. On the other hand, Haley Selassie used an opponent's anger to his advantage. He insulted Guska to force him into a trap, resulting in Guska's defeat. Do not provoke someone too often or it will lose its impact. Only use this strategy when you're sure you can handle the consequences. Law 40. Use money as a tool. Money isn't just for buying things, it's a tool to increase your power and reach your goals. Don't be tricked by free gifts. They often come with hidden costs. Instead, use money and generosity wisely to build a good reputation and make others feel they owe you. Use money creatively to improve your image and control how people act. For instance, giving gifts can make others feel they owe you something and make it harder for them to see your real intentions. It also helps you appear generous, attracting allies to help you achieve your goals. Watch out for these types of people who don't understand how to use money effectively. Greedy people. They focus too much on money and can be easily tricked because they lack emotional insight. Bargain hunters. Always searching for the cheapest deal often leads to wasting more money and being easily manipulated. Hardball players. They use money to show power and can push people away. 
overly generous people. Giving too much just to be admired makes you an easy target for scams. Baron James Rothschild used money to host impressive events, gaining social acceptance rather than just giving gifts or bribes. Use others' desire for a free lunch to your advantage, as their greed may blind them to your tricks. Law 42. Squelch the Troublemaker Trouble in any group often starts with one person who spreads dissatisfaction. To protect your power and maintain harmony, you must neutralize these troublemakers swiftly. Isolate or expose them to prevent their influence from growing and causing more discord. Identify troublemakers early as these individuals stir discontent, undermine group unity, and create factions. They can be overt or subtle in their methods. Ancient Athens dealt with such people by banishing them to prevent their negative impact on society. To address troublemakers effectively, spot them early. Look for those who complain excessively and gather followers. Isolate them. Remove them from their support base or group to limit their influence. This can be done physically, politically, or psychologically. Disrupt their power. Use distraction or deception to lure them away at a critical moment, making them vulnerable and easier to control. Ancient Athens practiced banishment to remove disruptive individuals like Aristides and Themistocles, who threatened the city's stability. This method maintained peace and order, demonstrating how removing troublemakers can restore harmony. When isolating a troublemaker, ensure they cannot return to seek revenge. For example, isolating Ulysses S. Grant led to his eventual rise to power as president. Keeping such individuals within your reach is sometimes better for monitoring and controlling their actions. That's it. If you have watched this far, thank you. Stay tuned for part 5, our last video for this series.